this video aims to be a guide for those wanting to start out in 35mm film. Most people wanting to shoot film today have likely never owned a proper camera bar their smartphone. So today we'll be going in depth about SLR cameras, point and shoot cameras, rangefinder style cameras and disposable. And we'll also talk about their pros and cons to help you make an informed decision. When I ask most of you to picture a camera in your mind, it is likely that the picture will look something like this, the SLR camera, or like this, a rangefinder. The SLR is a classic camera and a staple even to this day. SLR stands for single lens reflex, and this just basically means whatever you see through the viewfinder is connected to the lens, so whatever you see through the viewfinder is actually what the lens will see. This makes it extremely easy for composition, for focusing, and just making photos. The mirror on an SLR camera is what allows you to see through the lens. Whenever you press the shutter button, the mirror flaps up, and then the shutter will open, taking the photo. So what are the main benefits of the SLR? Well, the first and most obvious one is what you see through the viewfinder is eventually what your photo is going to look like. This is more important on film because you can't simply retake your photo every time you're not happy with the composition. Film is more of a, I've done it once and I'm only going to do it once. So it has to be done right. Another main benefit of the SLR, which some other types of cameras have, but in my opinion, the SLR does best, is its interchangeable lenses. Pretty much any kind of focal length or type of lens you can imagine is compatible with an SLR. So at the moment I have the 50mm f1.8, you can also get an f1.4 and f1.2. If you don't like the focal length of 50 millimeters, you can also get a 28, a 24, a 35, a 400. This means with an SLR, you can do macro photography, long distance photography, or just general all round wide shots, landscapes. It's really the most versatile do it all camera. If the SLR is the only camera you want to buy and nothing else, this is a strong recommendation. The SLR also has full manual control of every single aspect of the camera. You can have full control of your aperture, shutter speed, focus. Later cameras also have autofocus, fully automatic modes as well. So if you just want to focus and shoot, that's also an option for you. While the SLR is a great all-rounder and it can do pretty much everything you'd want it to, it does have a few disadvantages. The main of which being an SLR is perhaps the biggest and bulkiest of any 35mm film camera you could get. This is mainly because of the mirror assembly. This is what makes the SLR work and enables you to see through the lens. It's this big mirror that flips up every single time you want to take a photo. It makes the camera much taller, much wider, and also much heavier. This results in a camera that's very noticeable. Whenever you have one of these around, people are more likely to notice this camera out of any other. This makes it a bit more awkward for street photography and things like that. People will know you have a camera on you and they will definitely know if you take a photo of them. This also leads into another point. SLRs are also the noisiest of any of these cameras. Whenever you take a photo, someone is definitely going to know about it. This is because the mirror has to flip up and down every single time, and it's just all round one of the noisiest cameras you can take with you. Some of the best beginner SLRs that I recommend are the Canon A series. This extends to the Canon A1, A1 program, and A1. These are all great cameras with some automatic features that can make the learning curve a bit less steep if you're just coming into taking photos manually and taking film photos in general. Some other cameras are the Pentax K1000, an all manual camera that will certainly teach you the basics of photography and the Olympus series, the OM1, OM2, OM10, and there are also a bunch of other really amazing cameras in that line.
The next type of camera worth discussing are point and shoots. These are simple little cameras that control every aspect of the photo for you. All you have to do is point, shoot and have the picture, hence the name point and shoot. These are extremely popular and many people looking to shoot film are also looking at cameras like this. These are great cameras just to travel, to take photos of your friends, to just take along with you when you're going out to a party or to dinner or to some special occasion. These are probably the best cameras if you've never had any experience with a proper camera and you mainly just take photos with your iPhone. It's not too much of a learning curve. You simply just aim, shoot, and that's all you have to do. Some of the benefits of a point and shoot camera are they're very compact. These are the best types of cameras to carry with you every single day. They don't pose much of an inconvenience by simply slipping this into a pocket or your bag. They're also very easy to use. Most of them have an inbuilt flash, auto focus, auto exposure. You don't have to do a lot or know a lot to be able to take a photo with one of these cameras. They also often have self timers and more advanced cameras often let you choose the focus and the aperture. Another reason to shoot with a point and shoot is the aesthetic. Most of which, when you picture a film photo, you're picturing something that was taken on a disposable camera, often lit by the flash and not much going on in the background. These cameras can produce that look and instead of wasting plastic every single time you buy a disposable and throw it out, you can simply buy one of these cameras and shoot more rolls. It's also much cheaper to do it this way as you're just paying for the film and not the entire camera every single time you want to shoot a roll. One final benefit of point and shoot cameras are if you choose to get a more premium point and shoot like my contacts that I have here, it will often have a glass lens and these lenses are capable of producing photos almost identical if not better than photos that were taken by a rangefinder or an SLR. This is because film doesn't really matter what it's shot on, it's mainly just the lens that affects the look of the photo. Some disadvantages of point and shoots are they're quite limited. Like unlike the SLR, you can't do macro photography or long range photography. There's also little to no manual controls. If you wanna shoot, at, say a high aperture to get a nice blurred out background, few cameras will let you do that. Often point and shoots don't let you turn off your flash. This can be quite annoying if you don't want to alarm anyone or take a photo without the subject noticing. Flash is also quite distracting and some people don't really like the look of photos taken with a flash. Point and shoots are also very expensive for what you get. For what you pay for a point and shoot, that money will get you much more value placed in say a rangefinder or an SLR. And finally, one of the most damning disadvantages of the point and shoots are if they break, they're often not repairable. Point and shoots have a lot of electronic parts that aren't made anymore and can't be substituted with anything else. Say like most contacts cameras, there are certain errors that these can have that just make them permanently bricked and uneconomical to fix. So when you're, especially with a point and shoot, when you're investing a lot more than you would for any other camera, having it break is a lot more heartbreaking as they're often not repairable. Whereas if your SLR or your rangefinder has a problem, those cameras are pretty much entirely mechanical and can be repaired for relatively cheaply compared to what these can be. Some great beginner point and shoots are anything made by Canon, Pentax, Nikon. Some of the Olympus cameras can be had fairly cheaply. Most of these have glass lenses permanently on flashes, but they're a great way of getting into photography and just dipping your toes in shooting some film. If you're looking for something a little bit more premium that lets you control a bit more of the photo, like the manual focus and the aperture control, you should look for something like the Contax TVS, the Contax T2, Nikon produced the 28Ti, the 35Ti, Minolta have the TC1, and Olympus have the Mu series. There are a lot of premium point and shoots. It's likely that you'll pay a lot, but if you're dead set on this is what you want and you're gonna carry the camera every single day, you'll probably find some value in them.
The last type of camera worthy of discussion are rangefinders. These are very similar to SLRs, most having interchangeable lenses and very similar in body design. They are in fact very different cameras. A rangefinder doesn't allow you to see through the lens like an SLR does. Instead, you look through a separate window that's pretty close to the main lens, but will still cause a bit of framing issues. The way you focus on a rangefinder, there are two patches and you simply align both images until there isn't any parallax. So you would have two straight lines like this and when they're together, that's when your image is in focus. Some benefits of the rangefinder style of cameras are most of them do have interchangeable lenses like SLRs, but like I said, they are a bit more limited and you can only choose from about three focal lengths, if any. Rangefinders, while they're still big cameras, compared to an SLR, they are much thinner and much shorter because they don't have to account for the mirror. While you do have the trade-off of not being able to look through the lens, most people take the trade-off of having a smaller camera as the benefit. This also makes it a lot less noticeable, and because the mirror doesn't flap up and down, a rangefinder will make a lot less noise in comparison to an SLR. This is why most people choose to use rangefinders for street photography and taking photos of random people. They're a lot less noticeable and they're a lot less noisy than an SLR would be. Also, like the SLR, most rangefinders allow you to control every single aspect of the photo. This camera specifically lets you control shutter speed, aperture and the manual focus. This is extremely useful when you know what kind of photo you want to take and you want the tools to be able to do so. Some disadvantages of rangefinders, like I previously said, there are limited lens focal length options. So in this camera's case, you can only have 50, 35 and a 150. This is quite limiting if you want a specific focal length or you want to try a macro lens or a long range lens. Rangefinders also make composition a lot more difficult because the viewing screen is further away from the taking lens, there's often going to be some discrepancy with what you think the photo is going to look like and what it actually looks like. Luckily today we have things like just cropping your photo in the Photos app of your iPhone or Adobe Photoshop, which can help make your photo how you originally envisioned. But if you want your photo to be perfect from the camera, perhaps an SLR would be the better option. Some beginner rangefinders to consider. If you want something fully manual, these old Canon rangefinders like the Canon P, the Canon VT, the Canon VIT, they can be had for pretty cheaply. They're fully manual. You have to get an external light meter or meter with your phone. But once you get into that rhythm, they're very easy cameras to take photos with and they will produce fantastic results. If you want something a bit more modern and compact, there are cameras like the Canon Canonet series. These have fixed lenses, but they are very sharp and the cameras are very compact. And there's also the Olympus XA, and I'm sure there are a few other options to consider. Lastly, and in my personal opinion, the least, there are disposable cameras. These, as I'm sure most of you are familiar, are the little plastic bricks that you pick up from a drugstore or your local shopping center or supermarket. And it's just a very simple camera with a plastic lens and the film already loaded in. The advantages of these cameras are they're cheap, they're very simple, they're very available. You simply just go to whatever store, you take your photos and you just send the entire camera off to the development lab where they'll just sort everything out. Some personal disadvantages I see for disposables and why I don't personally like them is you're buying the entire camera every single time you want to purchase a roll of film. While this camera is very plasticky and very cheap, it's still a lot of waste being produced. Instead, if you choose to buy any of these other cameras, you just buy the roll of film, you load it and you unload it every single time. It's also a lot easier to develop this. It doesn't cause the plastic waste and you're getting much better photos as a result. 
So as we reach the end of the video and we've finished discussing the pros and cons of each type of camera, I'm sure you've already figured out by now that there is no right or wrong answer to this and it's simply what you think will suit you the most. If you want a camera that you're going to take with you every single day to just take photos of your life, you might want a point and shoot. If you want to experiment with some macro photography or some long distance photography, you rely on a bit more manual controls, then the SLR might be for you. If you just want a easy to use camera that you can carry around that people won't notice, but you still want that manual control and a bit more control of what the final image will look like, then the rangefinder style of camera might be for you. If you just want to try film and you're not sure if you're going to like it or you just want a really cheap camera that you don't care about that you can throw in your bag and then throw out when you're done with it, then the disposable kind of camera is probably your best option. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this has made the camera decision easier for you. The purchase of any 35mm film, whether it be disposable or with an SLR, is beneficial for the film community and for anyone that shoots film in general. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any positive or negative feedback, be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.